Uh -huh. Hey guys, welcome back to the studio, Brian, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and we are back for part five. I mean, this is like part 17 or something, but peace. Peace five. Getting the graffiti project, guys. Uh, two more sitting on the shelf ready for pickup. And look at that. I've actually got a seating area again. Well, he, he's always got seating room. He's not picky. But don't kid yourself, there's still a lot of work. Um, But nice to know we're soldiering through, guys. But look at this monstrosity. There's not much bench left after you put that thing up on there. Well, guys, this is where we're going to get into... More of a free hand, ka 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 sh, sh, sh. And I have a rough drawing on the bench there. I'm gonna tape it up and I am gonna get it as big as I can, wrapping around three angles of this thing. This massive trunk. I'm not dismayed. I am only more determined. <laughs> the look of determination. Alright guys, if you weren't around for the other pieces, just a quick recap. We started off with the graffiti eyeball drifting out into space. Then we did the Lady of Love. We dubbed her Venus for Valentine's Day. Um, we did Puddles for St. Patty's Day because why not? And we did Umbada which is an Indian deity, or I don't know if I'm getting this right. I think it's an Indian deity in the form of a motorcycle, and it's, you know, good luck, good luck charm for all those brah, brah, brah. All right, guys, I think I've jibber-jabbered too much, so I'm going to slap you guys into the holster. You can sit tight, and I'm going to get back to work. All right, guys, check it out. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see what's going on in this tangled rat's nest that I got drawn up here. But I know what's going on, and that's kind of all that matters. <laughs> all right, so we're going to have this on a pretty severe angle. And it's going to start up here and go all the way, guys, over these three sides. So I'm just going to start kicking this on in. And for those of you who are just tuning in, I am for this project, and this is one of the few occasions that I am using one-shot lettering enamel. Um, this is known as a pinstriping paint. It is used for doing the pinstripes. Usually, I recommend we clear coat over top of it, or at the very least, wax it religiously, something to seal in that paint. With this one being a matte finish, uh, waxing is not an option, and obviously to clear coat it, we could always do a matte clear, um, but it was a little bit more outside of the budget for what the client was after. So with all the parameters that we had uh, discussed, we decided that this was the best way to achieve the desired effect. And realistically, guys, for them saying that they want this to look like it was uh, left in a back alley and tagged. Alright, now, not necessarily a rush job that was done in a half an hour. You know where I'm getting at here, guys. But, uh, yeah, this paint really lends itself to having the spray can effect. Um, the fact that I can go straight over black with my colors and have it nice and bright is very appealing for this project and definitely helped achieve the desired outcome. So with my one-shot paint, guys, I have had to thin this stuff out considerably. Um, with my white, as you can see, uh, my white's pretty thin right now. I'm not going too heavy with it. I'm still in the map out phase of this project, so You'll notice some of these lines I put on, I'm like, yeah, that didn't quite work for me. And I move it over up and down a little bit to where I'm happy with it. 
And once I do find I'm happy and everything is mapped out, and that's when I'll go back in with a bit of a thicker white, guys, and just hit these lines a little heavier and just solidify where I want them to be. And again, this is all going to get covered, so this is just to map it out. Um, when I'm working on such a huge surface and over a bunch of different angles, Stencils are possible, definitely, but probably not the most time efficient. Um, so for this one, again, having a bit of freedom, as long as I kind of represent that drawing that the customer saw and make sure that they're in the colors that the customer requested, then I know I am on par. All right, guys, and check out how I'm bracing my hand with my other hand. You can see every now and then my knuckles get out there and I'm steadying myself, but for the majority, I'm just floating. You notice my wrists don't move a lot. They're pretty much locked, but I am moving the position of my airbrush. So notice when I'm putting the line on, which way I'm pointing that brush. For the majority of it, I'm pointing that brush in the direction that I want that line to go. Um, and getting... Uh, a little bit more of a corner on this guy again wasn't real happy with it but this is where i'm going in now and really as i was saying before guys just hitting these lines a little heavier and just laying them down where they're going to be their final resting place that sounded a little grim but uh we are uh we're mapping her out so this is how i know where everything is going to go um, you can even see where I've got the 3D. I'm starting to hit it with some lines just to kind of separate the top surface and then the 3D edges of it. Because I'll be honest, guys, even my brain gets a little confused staring at this stuff for too long. And this is why it's handy to do a drawing first. Uh, it's great to just get onto this and just start hacking away with some lines, but having no idea where you want those lines to go. Um, I know a lot of this was done sped up and I know a lot of it was edited out, but man, I am constantly referring to my reference when I'm mapping this out. Um, you're not going to see much of it past the map out phase because the rest is just colors. But even then, I've got color reference that either I had picked out and shown to the customer or the customer had brought to my door. And I gotta make sure I'm close to these colors, guys. So, reference is definitely a necessity. I swear by it. I know a lot of guys just freehand, freehand out of their brain. And good for them. Um, good for them. <laughs> There's no right or wrong. I'm knocking nobody. Do what works best for you. All I'm saying here is for this particular project, ah, this is what works best for me. All right, guys, trying to keep a little more real time in here for you guys so you just can kind of see. I know I can kind of spit and spew some knowledge, but sometimes it's just easier to watch and pick up the little idiosyncrasies that you see from where the... The body is being placed where the hand is, how the fingers caress the trigger. Uh, Alright, I got a little awkward. Um, but yeah, I just figured a lot of you guys ask for some real time, so I gotta give it to ya. And while we are here guys, notice the nice even brush strokes, not trying to build it up too fast, taking my time, multiple passes. Notice the concentration, the look of sheer determination. Alright guys, there I'm throwing in those lines again, just to sort of differentiate between the, the 3D edge and, and the top surface. And this is how I know where my colors will go. Alright, shuffling the piece around as I go guys, constantly moving this thing up and down, left and right, making sure it's at a comfortable angle for me to be working. Um, I do find that sometimes recording these videos, I'm constantly looking over my shoulder to make sure that you guys are, uh, seeing what I'm throwing down, and I know sometimes I forget to look over my shoulder to make sure you guys are seeing what I'm throwing down, and I know these aren't always the best angles, <laughs> as, as I'm covering the whole piece right here, guys, but... It is uh, a learning process for us all, and I do like to think that I'm getting a little better at this whole, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> recording for YouTube, but guys, let me know. Comments, hit me up, hit me down, drop me a line. Let me know what's going on, guys. If you think that there is something... Maybe I spent too much time on this video. Maybe I could have just did five minutes of doing the white and then five minutes of color and then a quick wrap up with some jibber jabber in between. I don't know guys, you let me know. I'm gonna break this up into one video with the mapping out and here is another great little uh, piece of advice that my father once told me. Follow the arrows, for they lead to greatness. I don't know where that came from, to be quite honest. But uh, we're getting into an area right here where, uh, yeah, um, hmm, you'll see me kind of hesitate a little bit. Yeah, there's the whole scratch of the head. Yeah, I don't think, nope, no, nah, that ain't working. So guys, a little bit of uh, turpentine is what I use to thin and clean out my lettering enamel. And voila. All right, guys, problem solved. I did not like the way that was uh, coming up over and around this little lip, the seam for the lid of the trunk here, guys. Again, I am working over multiple angles, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it just don't. So don't hesitate, guys. In the mapping out phase and even further on down the road, if you just get to where you're like, ah, I'm not happy where that is, man, wipe it out. Don't don't keep pushing it. Don't try to fix it by constantly tweaking a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. You'll just end up spinning your tires and <laughs> getting more frustrated than ever getting anything actually accomplished. So I definitely recommend... Take your time in the mapping out phase, guys. You don't want to be doing this later on down the road. But I'm just saying, if you find it necessary, don't be afraid. The whole thing about this art is, uh, it's always a learning process, guys. Um, and a hundred people are going to look at what I'm doing here and be like, Man, I would do that so different. And I agree. Sometimes I do things the long way, sometimes I do things the short way, and everything in between. Because, guys, I ain't perfect, man. I'm learning, too. Every day. This is why I love my job, is every day I learn something new. It's uh, what keeps me sharp, man. What keeps me constantly pushing, constantly evolving. Man, I do not believe for one second that... Uh, any one of us, I don't care how brilliant you happen to be or happen to think you may be, man, we can all learn from each other and we can all grow, man. There is no stop to this growing process, this thing called life, guys. And man, I ain't very religious, but I'll tell you, I don't believe that there is an end of the line. Um... The uh, first law of thermodynamics, guys, states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, when you think of it, and how much energy is in the human body, the human brain, the human heart, uh, yeah, it makes you wonder what actually happens. And, you know, my reality is... Ain't nobody ever come back to tell me what happened, so I'm gonna believe what I want, and I'll tell you guys, if energy can't be created or destroyed, then I'm telling you, it just keeps on going, just changes forms, my friend. And, uh, that means it ain't the end, my friend. <laughs> so, welcome it, you know, don't fear it. But with that being said, and uh, we're wrapping up the last couple lines on this uh, crazy little project. Guys, let me know what you think about science <laughs> and art. All right, guys. Tell me in the comments. Let me know if I'm uh, sparking a little bug inside you or if you think I'm nutty. <laughs> Either way, you're probably right. And um, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Uh, stay tuned for part two where we're going to tackle in some color. I think we're going to wrap this up in two. I haven't quite gotten that far yet. Maybe three. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> All right, guys. I, uh, thank you once again 
for gracing my studio with your presence. And I hope, oh, oh, one little change. I did not like where that line was going. So I'm gonna change it before I get too far. You hear me out, guys? You, you know what I'm throwing down? <laughs> all right. I think that's it. That's all. I hope you guys had a ball. And with that, you know how I do. <laughs> if you have any questions, guys, tap, 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 tap. Hit me up in the comments. I will get back to you. Um, ideas, suggestions, you know me, guys. I'm always here. I love the feedback. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Let me know what you think. And be sure to check out my other videos, guys. There's plenty in this series. I've got beginners. I've got hack videos. Check them out, guys. And as always, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Big cheers from the Bloodshot Studio.